Hi, I'm V.T. Badania, the author of Astrid and Apollo. Astrid and Apollo is a new chapter book series that was just published by Capstone on August 1st of this year. Astrid and Apollo stars eight-year-old twins, Astrid and Apollo Lee, who are second-generation Hmong Americans living in Minnesota. Second-generation means that their parents were born in Laos, which is where Hmong people are from, but they were born here in the U.S. Readers can follow along as the twins enjoy everyday adventures like camping and fishing and attending the Hmong July Soccer Festival and the Hmong New Year celebration. Minnesota is home to one of the largest Hmong communities in the country, so I wanted to be sure that the twins could be seen attending these special events that are hosted by the local Hmong community, and I wanted readers to see the twins participating in outdoor activities like camping and fishing that are so popular with Minnesotans and especially with Hmong families in Minnesota. I'm not second generation like Astrid and Apollo. I'm not second generation like Astrid and Apollo. I'm first generation. I was born in Laos around the time of the Vietnam War. After my family and I escaped from Laos, we lived in a refugee camp in Thailand for a short time until a church in Wisconsin sponsored us to come to America. When we first came to the U.S., we lived in a small town in Wisconsin called Sparta. At the time, I was the baby in the family. I was the youngest of five kids. After we left Sparta, we moved to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where my younger sister was born. And then we moved to St. Paul, where my younger brother was born. I grew up in St. Paul. I went to elementary school, junior high school, and high school, and college. And then I moved out of state. And I recently moved back to Minnesota, which is where I live now. So I wrote Astrid and Apollo because I want Hmong children to see themselves represented in books. And it was really important to me that that representation would be a positive, accurate, and authentic representation. I also wanted to make sure that it would be an updated representation. Because Hmong people aren't often included in mainstream media or mainstream literature, but on the rare occasions that we are visible, that representation tends to be outdated. It tends to be the sad, struggling, refugee, immigrant narrative. Now, a lot of the Hmong kids today can't really relate to that refugee experience anymore because their families have been here for many generations already. Even though it's really important that they know and understand our history and the hardships and hardships and struggles that our families have faced as refugees, it's also important that they see themselves in happy stories and stories that are a more authentic um, and positive representation and reflection of their lives right now. So not only did I want them to see themselves in these positive and updated representations, I also wanted them to see themselves as the stars of a book. If white kids and other kids get to be stars and heroes of a book or book series and get to have fun experiences, then there's no reason why Hmong children can't also see themselves as the stars and heroes of a book series and having fun, happy experiences. I didn't want Hmong kids to read books where they would just have some representation and be minor characters or characters on the sidelines or token minority characters, but the actual stars. If they're the stars and heroes of their lives, then they should be able to read about themselves as the stars and heroes of a book and their very own book series. To me, Astrid and Apollo is a celebration of Hmong children. I hope that when Hmong readers read my books, they see themselves, their families, and their friends represented. And I hope that when non-Hmong readers read the books, they Maybe we'll learn a little bit about Hmong culture, food, and language. Most important of all, I want non-Hmong readers to read the books and see and understand that different backgrounds and different races and different cultures don't have to be a barrier to being able to relate to a character or a story. Just like we can relate to your stories and your experiences, you can also relate to our stories and our experiences. So all of the books in the Astrid and Apollo series are actually inspired by true events. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the backstory of the first book in the series, Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout. As I said, this is the first book in the series, and this was actually based on my own personal experience camping. So 
I actually never went camping as a kid. Um, I didn't go um, as a teenager or a young adult. My family was not very outdoorsy, so we didn't really participate in a lot of the outdoorsy events that a lot of Hmong families like to do today and a lot of Minnesotans like to do. But um, I'm an adult now and I have my own family. And recently when we moved back to Minnesota, as I said, um, my husband, who's actually a very outdoorsy person, really wanted the kids to have that experience camping. So he wanted us to go and try camping. And that summer, my cousin, um, who arranges an annual camping event for all of our families, um, invited us to go along on this trip. So we were very excited and we went on this camping trip with, with my cousins and all these other families. And what we didn't know was that that particular campsite actually had a, a big mosquito issue. And we didn't know this until we got there, none of us knew, but the whole time that we were there, we were actually basically attacked by swarms and swarms of mosquitoes every single day. We had to cut that camping trip short. And when we came home, we had mosquito bites all over our bodies. Um, it was a pretty painful experience. So that wasn't a very fun experience, but my husband really wanted to try again. So he did a little research and he found a campsite in Southern Minnesota. Um, called Forestville. For those of you who aren't familiar with Forestville, which I'm pretty sure many of you are, it's a beautiful park. I really highly recommend it. Um, this place didn't have a lot of mosquitoes or didn't have any mosquitoes. And we were told it's because they have a lot of bats that live near the park. So we took the kids and we went there and we were having a really good time. But the first night we were there, um, we made a little mistake. It was an accident we didn't mean to. But when we went to sleep, we forgot our cooler outside the tent. And that night as we were sleeping, we started to hear really strange sounds outside the tent. Um, they were really kind of scary noises and it sounded like someone or something was out there. Um, we were pretty frightened, we weren't sure what to do, but um, in the morning when we woke up, we went outside and looked around and the cooler that we had forgotten was covered with some dusty paw prints. And when we opened it, it was empty. So we had packed a lot of really, really good food that we were all looking forward to having, especially Hmong sausages. Whoever is not familiar with Hmong sausages, I'll tell you now that they are delicious. They're crispy and crunchy and spicy, and they're just really, really good. They're different from American breakfast sausages. And they're sort of like bratwursts, but even better. Um, well, we were looking forward to having that, but it was all gone. So this experience is similar to what Astrid and Apollo experienced with their family on their first camping trip. I hope you'll read the book and you'll find out what happens to them. I'm going to be reading an excerpt from the second chapter in the book. What happens in the first chapter is that Astrid is very nervous about going camping. Um, she doesn't want to sleep outside in the dark. She doesn't want to be in the woods at night. Um, she actually really wants to bring her um, wand. She has this toy wand that lights up, it glows in the dark, and she wants to bring that with her to give her some light and her twin brother Apollo convinces her that camping is going to be a fun adventure. So they get in the car and they go camping and this is chapter two. Chapter two, amazing egg rolls. On the way to the campground, the family stopped for burgers and fries. Dad got the food at the drive through window. Mom passed it to Astrid and Apollo in the back seat. Here's your lunch, she said. Thanks, Astrid sighed, looking down at her burger. She had been hoping for egg rolls. Mom, I wish we had egg rolls. I'm sorry I didn't have time to make them this morning, Mom said. Packing for camping took a long time. I promised to make amazing egg rolls another time. The campground was three hours away. Astrid sat back and fell asleep. When she woke up, Dad was driving into the state park. He checked them in at the office, then he bought a pack of wood. For the campfire, he said. They drove on a whiny road into the forest. Look at all those trees, said Apollo. The trees were tall and pretty. The sun was shining down through the leaves. Astrid watched the forest carefully. She wondered, were bears hiding in there? Big mean bears with sharp claws and sharp teeth? After a few minutes, Dad said, there it is. He turned off the road and parked. Everyone got out of the car. Dad took the tent from the car. He spread it out on the grass. He handed a long bendy pole to Astrid and Apollo. Dad showed them loops on the outside of the tent. Now stick the pole into these loops, he said. Astrid and Apollo went to the car and got more poles. They put them through the tent loops. The poles lifted the tent up high. Soon the tent was standing up like a little house. Astrid looked up at the orange and purple sky. The sun was setting. She hurried to the car. She had to get her glow-in-the-dark wand. But when she opened the car door, the wand wasn't there. Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout is the first book in the series. 
As I said, this is the one where the family goes camping for the very first time. The second book is Astrid and Apollo and the Fishing Flop. And in this book, they go fishing for the first time and have a fun time fishing. The third book is Astrid and Apollo and the Soccer Celebration. And in this book, they attend the Hmong July Soccer Festival, which is a huge tournament that's held every summer on during July 4th weekend at Como Park in St. Paul. This is a really big special event that draws hundreds of thousands of people to the state. There are lots of fun activities there. Um, people can watch soccer games, volleyball games, other sports, but most of all, there's a ton of really, really good food there. And you can consider it sort of like the Minnesota State Fair food, but Hmong style. The last book in the series is Astrid and Apollo and the Happy New Year. And in this book, the twins go with their family to the Hmong New Year celebration. The Thanksgiving weekend in November is when we celebrate our New Year. and in this particular book, they go to the St. Paul celebration, but there are actually celebrations all throughout November, December, and January in St. Paul and Minneapolis. So th those are the four books in the series. They all published August 1st, as I said. Um, they're available now wherever books are sold. Um, I really hope that you'll get a copy and enjoy these books um, as much as I enjoyed writing them. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Minnesota Children's Book Festival.